Warum greifen Sie deutsche Ziele an? Warum wollen Sie deutsche Ziele angreifen? Wir bitte in das Militär, wir haben einen Anlass. Danke sehr. Herr Botschafter, warum planen Sie Angriffe auf russische Ziele? Wollen Sie wieder Krieg mit Russland? Haben Sie noch Wollen eine Rechnung offen? Krieg mit Russland? Was wäre denn Ihr bevorzugtes Ziel? This is my video update on this Monday morning, March the 4th. Let's talk about some news. And let's start things off with Neocon Nikki Haley winning the GOP primary in Washington, D.C. in the District of Columbia. Neocon Nikki Haley, she defeated Donald Trump to win the District of Columbia. Her first victory. Congratulations to Nikki Haley. You are the winner in the D.C. swamp. <laughs> 2,000 people voted. Uh, 2,035 people voted in D.C. And they overwhelmingly voted for Nikki Haley as their choice to represent the Republican Party in the November 2024 election. Is this a win for Haley or is this a loss for Haley and a win for Trump? <laughs> I'm not sure if uh, Nikki Haley should be proud of this victory in D.C. But she did uh, tweet out about her win in the nation's capital. She said, let's do it. Thank you, D.C. We fight for every inch. <laughs> Even when she's winning, she's losing. <laughs> oh, God, Nikki Haley. <laughs> oh, boy. So Trump, uh, Trump won the, the states that matter, the places that matter. He uh, crushed Nikki Haley yesterday in uh, Michigan, Missouri, and Idaho. And, I, and when I mean he crushed Nikki Haley, it was like 80% 80, 80 or 85% in favor of Trump and whatever remained, in, uh, whatever remained was for Nikki Haley and a couple of votes for, for DeSantis and, and Scott, whatever. It was, it was a huge uh, thrashing thumping victory for uh, for Trump in in Missouri, Michigan and Idaho and we are heading into Super Tuesday tomorrow and Trump is expected to to completely wipe out Nikki Haley on Super Tuesday but hey she won DC that's got to count for something huh and she uh, she appeared on I believe MSNBC or NBC and uh, she was being interviewed and Nikki Haley said that she's no longer bound by the pledge to support uh, Donald Trump. Remember all the, all the Republican candidates, they swore an oath or a pledge that if they were to lose to Trump in the GOP primaries, they would uh, support Trump. And Nikki Haley the other day, she said, no, nah, no, nah, that doesn't. That doesn't count anymore. That pledge is no good because the RNC has changed. <laughs> Everything has changed. Uh, Rana McDaniel, she's going to no longer be the head of the RNC come November. So uh, the, the pledge, the oath that I swore to, no good. <laughs> I take it back. I take back that promise. I take back that oath. Nikki Haley's going to run as an independent. <laughs> That's what she's going to do. As long as there's Democrat money to be given to her, why not? <laughs> why not? If you're, if you're dumb enough to actually donate to the Nikki Haley campaign, whether she's running as a Republican or an independent, Nikki Haley is there to take your money. So yeah, that's what she's going to do. She's going to run as an independent. Anyway, that is the news coming out of the United States. Super Tuesday tomorrow. How many states are we talking about? 14, 15 states? going to be a big a big day tomorrow in the US. And la now let's go to Germany where 
Germany continues to freak out over the Crimea bridge audio uh, leak. They're freaking out more. Germany is freaking out more about this audio leak than uh, Russia. <laughs> and, and this was about attacking Russia. This audio leak was about attacking the Kerch Bridge in Crimea, attacking Russian territory. And uh, it's Germany that's freaking out more about this leak than the Russians. And boy, are they freaking out. And the narrative that is coming out of Germany now is that uh, this was this was all part of uh, Putin's disinformation war against uh, Germany, against the collective West. At least that is what the defense minister Pistorius said yesterday at a press briefing in Berlin. Pistorius focused on the source of the leak rather than the substance of the conversation blaming the incident on Russian President Vladimir Putin. It is part of an information war that Putin is waging, the defense chief said. There is absolutely no doubt about that. It's a hybrid attack aimed at disinformation. It is Putin's fault. It is all Putin's fault. I guess you can't blame Trump on this one, so you have to blame Putin. Maybe Pistorius should tell his military commanders to not have these types of sensitive conversations on platforms that are not secure. Stop talking about this stuff on Snapchat and on WhatsApp, guys. <laughs> Use a secure line when you're gonna talk about sending Taurus missiles to Ukraine or possibly sending Taurus missiles to Ukraine in order to destroy the Kerch Bridge for a war that you claim you are not a party to. <laughs> Maybe you should have these types of conversations, these briefings on a secure platform, but no, it's, it's Putin's fault, according to Pistorius. So here is what Zero Hedge says about the purpose of the conversation. From the telephone conference, it emerges that the aim of the discussion was to prepare a meeting between these participants and Foreign Minister Boris, Defense Minister Zero Hedge, Defense Minister Boris Pistorius, during which the possibilities and difficulties of using the Taurus system would be presented. Yeah, right. They were just, they were just spitballing. They were just spitballing. They were preparing a, a PowerPoint presentation, a briefing for Pistorius. That's it. It was just a briefing, a preparation for PowerPoint slide presentation. That's what this conversation was really about. <laughs> oh boy. Pistorius said at this uh, press conference that he had that uh, while German military officials discussed various scenarios to use Taurus missiles, it does not mean a green light to supply the weapons to Ukraine. Exactly. Exactly. Just because you have top military commanders, not, not lower level uh, Air Force pilots, not uh, lower level political aides or something like that, but uh, just because you have top Air Force and military commanders talking about Taurus missiles going to Ukraine and those Taurus missiles hitting the Kerch Bridge and discussing if this is possible or what type of damage this would do to the Kerch Bridge. Just because you have this conversation from top military command to be put together in a briefing to the defense minister doesn't mean that, uh, that Germany has greenlit the, uh, the sending of tourist missiles to Ukraine. Come on, bro. <laughs> Who are you trying to kid, man? Who are you trying to kid? It's Russian disinformation. This doesn't mean that we're, that we're sending tourist missiles to, uh, to Ukraine. Is, is this gaslighting? Is that the correct term for, for what Pistorius is, is doing here? Is he gaslighting people? 
I don't know if that's the correct use of the of the term of the word gaslighting, but uh, come on, come on. You have top German military officials talking about blowing up a bridge in Crimea, a Russian bridge where they admit serves no military uh, benefit whatsoever. They admit that this is a political operation hitting a civilian infrastructure target. You have these top Air Force officials, military officials talking about this. And the problem is that they're talking about this and this is going to go in a briefing to the defense minister. And the narrative that Germany has been putting out there over the past two years is that Germany is not a party to this war. That's the problem. That is the problem. For two years, the German government has been saying we are not a party to this war. Not a party. Not a party to this war. We're just helping Ukraine defend itself. We don't want conflict with Russia. We don't want to escalate with Russia. We're just trying to protect Ukraine and protect Europe. But we're not a party to this war. And now you have Air Force commanders talking about sending Taurus missiles, possibly sending Taurus missiles in order to blow up the Kerch Bridge. We're talking about the possibility of Ukraine military blowing up the Kerch Bridge. And by the way, they also admit that or at least they talk about how the US, UK and France are also on the ground or helping out the Ukraine military uh, target uh, Russia, target the Russian military or target uh, Russian infrastructure. They talk about that <coughs> as well in this uh, audio recording. But according to Pistorius, this is just Russian disinformation. This is all Putin's fault. Putin, Putin, Putin. <laughs> oh boy so yeah germany's got to uh you know germany's got to to crack down on uh, russian disinformation right they're gonna have to censor more they're gonna have to uh speak with social media to to try and uh and block those those russian uh disinformation accounts yeah that's what they're gonna have to do So, yeah, they're going to send the Taurus missiles. <laughs> Absolutely going to send the Taurus missiles. You know, at least Macron, at least Macron, as crazy and ridiculous and delusional, delusional as Macron is, at least he had the cojones to, uh, to come out and say that France wants war with Russia. At least he admitted what his, his plan, what his intentions are for, for this conflict in Ukraine. Yes, we should send French troops into Ukraine as a tripwire so that we can start a war between Russia and, and NATO. And France should absolutely uh, engage, the French military should absolutely engage with the Russian military. Of course, we want the U.S. behind us because we don't want to be alone as France, but those are my intentions. That's my plan. I want to send French troops to Ukraine, not mercenaries, not covert. I want to send French military into Ukraine to act as a tripwire so that I can start World War III. At least Macron had the cojones to say that. He's crazy. He's nuts. He's delusional. But at least he, he came out and said it. So now we know what Macron wants to see happen with Project Ukraine. He wants World War III. So, you know, Schultz, Tor uh, Schultz uh, Pistorius, Taurus missiles, just come out and say it. Taurus missiles are going to Ukraine. And let's stop this whole song and dance about escalating with Russia. And maybe we'll escalate. Maybe we won't. Maybe we'll send the Taurus. Maybe we won't. Just because our Air Force commanders talk about the Taurus missiles going to Ukraine and hitting the Kerch Bridge doesn't mean we're going to send the Taurus missiles and we're not a party to this war. Just, just come clean with, with the German people, with the world, and just tell them, yes, we're going to send the Taurus missiles because that's what they're going to do. This is exactly what they did with the Leopard tanks. Remember the Leopard tanks a year, year and a half ago, whatever, when uh, Schultz was saying, we are not going to send 
Leopard tanks to Ukraine. This is a step too far. This is too much of an escalation. We're not a party to this war. There's no way we're going to send Leopard tanks. No way, no chance. Uh, maybe we'll send one Leopard tank. Okay, maybe we'll send 12 Leopard tanks. Okay, we'll send 50 Leopard tanks. Okay, 200 Leopard tanks. And then Adelina Baerbach would come out with statements like, well, these aren't German Leopard tanks. These are Ukraine Leopard tanks because you see the minute that we send Leopard tanks to Ukraine, they stop being German Leopard tanks. And they start being uh, Ukraine Leopard tanks. So we're not a party to this war because what Russia is actually fighting are, are Ukraine Leopard tanks, not German Leopard tanks <laughs> right this is the same thing it's the same thing they're it, it's like they're they're building up anticipation for something that we already know is going to happen it's like they're going to release a, a movie or something and so they're building up the hype and the anticipation will ukraine get tourist missiles or not will the tourist missiles be delivered or not coming soon to a theater near you and we all know that they're going to deliver the tourist missiles. We all know that's what they're going to do. But they're building up the anticipation. And when they were uh, talking about delivering the, the leopard tanks to Ukraine, remember the, the images that were on, uh, on Twitter and Telegram of, of leopards, like images of the, of the actual animal, the leopard, like going up against the bear. And, and, and there were memes and images saying the leopard is going to tear apart the bear. And they, and they were pictures of the leopard moving into, into Ukraine on the front line, about to tear apart the Russian bear. And they had all of this, this, these slick images and, and this hype about the leopards, the wonder weapon, the leopard tanks. And Russia demolished the leopard tanks, demolished the leopard tanks. And, and now you're getting the same type of imagery with the Taurus missiles, right? You have the, the Taurus, the bull with the horns about to, to go into Ukraine and to and the Taurus is going to <laughs> is going to stab the Russian bear, right? Same song and dance. Anyway, uh, that is uh, that is the freak out that is coming out of Germany, and uh, they're blaming it all on Putin. All of it is Putin. So Mike Johnson, according to CNN. He is uh, speaking with House Republicans, and they're putting together an alternative Ukraine aid package in the House. U.S. House Speaker Mike Johnson has met privately with Republicans who support military aid to Ukraine about crafting an alternative foreign aid bill in the House, CNN reported on March 3rd. Republicans hope to finalize their proposal and bring it to vote by late March or April. The House proposal would reportedly allocate $66 billion to Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan, but would not include humanitarian aid. It would also impose even more draconian restrictions on immigrants at the U.S.-Mexico border, including blanket denial of entry to any asylum seekers until the U.S. achieves operational control of the border. So that's, that's the key to getting money to Ukraine. The key to getting money to Ukraine and to Israel and to Taiwan, but they really want to get money to Ukraine. The key is to come to an agreement on the border. If they can, if the House and Mike Johnson, the Republicans, can figure out a way, a formula, to make it acceptable for Biden in terms of the southern border to accept whatever plan they put together for the southern border to make it acceptable for the Biden White House, then that's how you unlock 60, 66 billion to, to Ukraine, Taiwan, and Israel. But most of the money is going to be for Project Ukraine. And that is what Mike Johnson and the House are trying to put together. How can we make a southern border deal that, how can we put together a southern border deal that the Biden White House can accept? If we could put that together, then we've got that money to Project Ukraine guaranteed. Even if the new proposal does make it to the floor, it will likely face opposition from both parties. The border restrictions, lack of humanitarian aid, 
and funding for Israel's bombardment of Gaza will alienate Democrats who may otherwise support aid to Ukraine. Hardline Republicans who support former U.S. President Trump also remain opposed to arming Ukraine in principle. Chip Roy, a pro-Trump House Republican who is against aid to Ukraine, told CNN that he doesn't think Johnson could support, should support the bill, but that it may advance anyway. Quote, the defense hawks usually get their way, and that's just the way this town works, Roy said. Chip Roy from Texas, right? Texas. Chip Roy. That's just the way this town works. The war hawks, the neocons. The neocons always get their way. And they will find a way to get something passed in the House and to get money to Project Ukraine. That's just the way the swamp works. So another Abrams tank was destroyed yesterday, I believe by a drone. A little drone destroyed this million dollar, multi-million dollar wonder weapon Abram tank, Abrams tank. And uh, we have confirmation of this. We have video and, and images which confirm that, uh, that this Abrams tank was destroyed. How many tanks now confirmed have been destroyed? Abr Abrams tanks, two, three, four, by a drone, a little drone destroyed the indestructible Abrams tank. And we have confirmation of this. Can't be disputed. Unlike the narrative that Ukraine is shooting down, every day they're shooting down two or three Russian Su-34 fighter jets, of which we have zero video or image uh, confirmation. Maybe Ukraine is shooting down two or three Su-34s every day for like the past month. But uh, we haven't seen any, any video or image confirmation that Ukraine is actually pulling this off. Abrams tanks, we have the confirmation. Shooting down Su-34s, nothing, absolutely nothing to confirm this. And maybe they are, but let's see the receipts. Ukraine military. Let's see the receipts. And that brings me to my first clown world. This is a tweet from the pro Ukraine account, Nexta, which says Ukraine air defense shot down a second Russian Su 34 within a single day. So, another Su 34. A second Su-34 shot down within a single day, according to the pro-Ukrainian account Nexta. And Frank Japson asked Nexta, is there proof? Is there proof, Nexta? And Nexta, as proof, they replied to Frank with two images from the infograph provided by the Ukraine Air Force Ministry of Defense. That's the proof, is a Photoshop image infograph. That's the proof that they're using for the shooting down of Su-34s. Is there proof? Of course there is. Look at this Photoshop infograph from the Ministry of Defense which has some numbers and, and, uh, and an image, <laughs> a, a, a GIF, a JPEG image of, uh, of a fighter jet. This is the proof. <laughs> this is all you need. <laughs> okay, if, if that infograph from the Ministry of Defense says that you shot down uh, an SU-34, another SU-34, it must be true. <laughs> and this is the problem. For the collective west when it comes to project ukraine this is the reason they're so bogged down and they're losing so bad when it comes to project ukraine it's because the collective west 
and the collectivist media, they've been basing their entire Project Ukraine policy and strategy on what the Ukraine Ministry of Defense and what the Alensky regime has been telling them over the past two years. And they don't question any of it. They don't follow up on it. They don't research any of the claims from, uh, from the Alensky regime or from the Ukraine Min Ministry of Defense. They don't ask for any receipts. Nothing. Whatever the Ukraine Ministry of Defense or whatever Alensky tells them, they just accept it as 100% fact. Oh, so the Ukraine Ministry of Defense, that infograph tells us that uh, a thousand Russian tanks were destroyed in one day? Must be true. Oh, Alensky is saying that Putin is sick? Must be true. Alensky is saying that Russia's running out of weapons? Must be true. Ukraine Ministry of Defense says that uh, Russia's running out of weapons? Look, they have, they have a, a pie chart. <laughs> they have a pie chart which shows Russia had this many weapons yesterday and now it has only this many weapons today. Must be true. This is why they're in the trouble they are in. This is why the hole is so deep, too deep for them to get out of. Is because their entire policy is based on the misinformation, Mr. German Defense Minister, based on the misinformation and the propaganda from, uh, from Ukraine. And the media as well. The media bases all of their reporting on Project Ukraine from the uh, Ukraine Ministry of Defense and from the Alensky regime, and they don't question any of it. They don't research any of it. Nothing. You would think that as journalists, as media, they would research some of the, the outrageous claims that Ukraine has come up with over the past two years. The Zaporozhye Avenger and the Ghost of Kiev and stuff like that. Russia's running out of weapons and shovels and washing machine chips. Nope, they don't question any of it. Actually, they even pump up the narrative and then they, then they base their entire policy on these types of, uh, of fake narratives. So anyway, that is Nexta's proof. That is their receipts. Defense Ministry infograph proving that they have uh, shot down an SU-34. So one more clown world and we'll wrap this video up. In Cyprus, a Ukrainian woman traveled to Cyprus, from Ukraine to Cyprus, and she arrived at the airport she took a taxi to Limassol, a very popular uh, beach, beach town of Limassol. And she took a taxi to, to this popular destination. And she was robbed. She was robbed right when she arrived in Limassol. At the exact moment that she arrived in Limassol, this Ukrainian 31-year-old woman was robbed. Now, guess how much money she had in her bag, in her purse, when she was robbed? Take a guess. 420,000 euros in cash. In cash. And this Ukrainian woman, she claims that the people that robbed her, they took the cash and they just ran away. They escaped on foot. The woman, reported to be from Ukraine, arrived in Limassol by taxi from the airport with 420,000 euros in her purse. She told police she was robbed by a group of people that grabbed her bag and fled the scene on foot. So the police, they started questioning this woman. 420,000 euros in your bag, huh? Coming from Ukraine. Tell me more, good woman. <laughs> Tell me more. And uh, they found out, questioning this woman, that she has been traveling to Cyprus for the last six months and she has brought in six million euros in cash into the country. Six million euros, everybody, in cash. Where did she get the six million euros? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So now she's, uh, she's awaiting trial, I believe. I believe she is being held by the police, or she will be held by the police for the next five days. She's being questioned by the police because her story, her stories don't really add up. And from what I understand, she's not really cooperating with the authorities in Cyprus. And uh, we're talking about six million euros. And from what I'm, I'm gathering, she might be charged with some sort of 
criminal activity or money laundering or something like that. Um, I'm not 100% certain what, what the charges may be or if she's going to be charged or if she's going to be let go, but I'm reading that, that the police are, are, are not exactly believing her stories and that uh, she may be brought up on some sort of charges. Don't know, but... I'm going to follow this story and I will update everyone as to what is going on. But, you know, uh, Mike Johnson, get that $61 billion or whatever. Whatever amount of money, get that to Project Ukraine because, you know, we got we to gotta make more, more millionaires. We got to mint more millionaires and more billionaires. <laughs> They're waiting to be minted in, uh, in Ukraine and in Europe and in the United States. And these newly minted millionaires and billionaires, they, they have to buy uh, real estate and they're going to have to buy football clubs and uh, they're going to need lawyers and they're going to need accountants. And uh, all this money is going to, to prop up the economies of the collective West for just a little bit longer. So Speaker of the House Johnson and Republicans in Congress, let's get to that uh, 61 billion or 50 billion or whatever. Let's get that to Project Ukraine. Let's get that 300 billion in Russian assets stolen. And uh, let's make some more billionaires and millionaires. You know, the funny thing is about this story is that uh, the European Union, they started to, to ban Russians from not only traveling to the EU, but also investing in, uh, in the European Union and and some countries are trying to ban Russians from buying real estate and stuff like that, right? They started to crack down on Russian investment and, and Russian money coming into the European Union. And even in Cyprus, they started to crack down on, on Russian money coming into Cyprus because it was, it was laundered. It was all laundered, right? And they had to stop the Russian money laundering. It, just, it, it wasn't the, the money laundering that, that was acceptable to them. <laughs> they wanted a different type of money laundering where they benefit, right? So now, so now the, the, the cash is, is flowing in from, from Project Ukraine, it seems. Anyway, that is the video, everybody. The Duran.locals.com. We are on Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute, Telegram, Rockfin, and Twitter X. And go to the Duran shop, 15% off t-shirts. Take care.